There is something that I ordered. I ordered this about a week ago from Reverb.com. And I gotta say the anticipation level was pretty high waiting for this to arrive. And uh, just to give you a brief history of what this guitar is all about. So Music Man. Uh, all the parts are on 1976. It was assembled in 1977, right after the Christmas holiday, uh, in California, United States. And uh, the company was owned by Clarence Leo Fender. And he started Music Man after he was able to compete again in the guitar business after a uh, 10 year clause of uh, not being able to compete. So this was the beginning of. Uh, Another adventure on guitar manufacturing from Leo Fender. See, it's a ship UPS in a cardboard box, well protected. They put uh, which side was top, wrote fragile on it. And I've been watching the weather while it was uh, being delivered in transit. And uh, it's been pretty cold. We got down to 20 degrees. And I know maple necks and ash bodies do very well in temperature changes. So I don't think I'll have any problems with lamination cracks or anything like that. There's no lamination on this guitar. Maple neck, solid maple, and a solid ash body, natural finish. And they got this sucker wrapped pretty good. There's a lot of tape. So I just gotta cut away, adjust the tape. And if there's anything wrong with the guitar, of course, I'm gonna wanna have a box intact so I don't have to spend $15 to buy another box and ship it back. Looks like they packed it really good. In the original case, and uh, they bubble wrapped it, which I'm really happy about. I was wondering how they were going to protect the original tweed off the original tweed case, and I can see now they've got it wrapped good in bubble wrap. And I'm not throwing the bubble wrap away because that's good stuff. Looks like they gave me a whole roll of bubble wrap. They made a bubble wrap pillow for one side. And the leather handle, well, it looks 45 years old. Another roll of bubble wrap for a pillow. Yeah, they, they got it all around, both sides, top, bottom, and the box edges. Looks like they doubled up on the box edges. So this, this guitar and shipment, it, it actually could have been bounced around and been okay. Really happy about the bubble wrap. And uh, they got the latches uh, taped off so that they don't open up. And that's it. The box is empty. And there is the case. Uh, it's not a tweed case, but it is the original case. The other cases that I saw that were on uh, similar guitars, not this one, that were for sale, had tweed cases. But this one's a hard shell, not a tweed, but the original case. So, not really let down about it not being a tweed case. But it's in great shape. Tweed cases are hard to clean and they're not as water resistant as uh, this nice material here. Nice, nice vinyl. 
So now I gotta take this blue masking tape off. I'll even save the masking tape. I might have a painting, a painting job to do. I might want to mask off some trim. I won't throw the tape away. Save it. Now, will it open or will I need the key to open it? Opens. Opens. Okay, all the latches are now done. And make sure the camera's in view. This is still going to be the first time I looked at this guitar ever in real life. And, uh, so I got the whole experience right here on video. position the case so that when I open it, the camera's going to see you guys in the camera. You're going to see the guitar at the same time as I do. Make sure I got it just right. Okay, here we go. Drum roll. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, here it is. I got to say, this is the holy grail of... Uh, Lay Down Sally, Wonderful Tonight, I Shot the Sheriff, and just about any other song that Clapton did in a recording studio or live from the years 1977 on to 1981. That was the whole time of five years. George Terry was his guitar player. And, uh, same guitar, black pickups. Uh, lead guitars on little feet. And, uh, so there's also Paul's guitar too, which is kind of cool. So it's got the slow hand sound of Lay Down Sally and the spank of little feet. Okay, it looks very clean. Neck feels very smooth. It does not feel like a guitar that's been sitting for 40 years in a closet. However, it looks like a guitar that's been very rarely played. Still has the protective peel-off sticker. Right from the Music Man factory. And uh, when I first saw this guitar, I'm thinking, wow, they got nice P90s on that guitar. And uh, no, sir. They're humbuckers. And uh, they're not split coil. They got phase switch. And right here is how the phase gets phase in, phase out. And right here, one position, two position. One, two, three, four. Four position chicken head switch. One, two, three, four. Active electronics. Nine volt battery goes here. And, uh, very nice, very nice. I don't know about the intonation, but it has my favorite style of saddles, which is rounded barrels. I have one other guitar that has that kind of a saddle. That being my Steinberger. Every once in a while I have to correctly reset it up when I uh, change strings and readjust the tremola. But it's got the same kind of rounded barrels as well. I like those because they don't pinch the string and they're perfect for tremola guitars. And it does come right back in the tune. I was able to balance that, that floating bridge perfectly the other day. And the intonation. Open. It tunes perfect. 12th fret. It tunes perfect. And the 24th fret. It tunes perfect. 
E string on the 24th fret, just a hair sharp. Perfect at the 12th and perfect open. So the intonation is very good with the rounded barrels. I don't know what the intonation is on this guitar is yet. I haven't checked it. String height to the neck looks perfect just by looking at it. I, I have the number one fret and I have the 22nd fret both pressed. And I do not hear string buzz and I do not see a wide gap anywheres what I do see is one thirty second of an inch of light between every fret all the way down so this guitar was manufactured pretty much perfect I gotta say I had I've had two US made fenders uh, lead to and, uh, and a Stratocaster and uh, so far, I gotta say this is equal, if not superior, in the setup. This is the oldest guitar I think I've purchased. I don't hear fret buzz on, on any of the strings. And I, I'm holding 22nd fret with my thumb, and I'm holding the, the number one fret with my finger. And I'm using my middle finger to pluck the string. And I'm getting the same 132nd gap. So even the even the barrel heights are damn near perfect to the radius of the neck. I didn't do that to the Steinberger yet. That's next on the list. And the Steinberger, I got two. I got two hex nut keys, one on each side, just like this one. These are a little smaller than my Steinberger, but I don't have to mess with these. These are perfect. What I do have is a spring and a screw on this bridge. So if I need to adjust the string length, sharp or flat, for the intonation at the 12th fret, I may have to do that. I don't have a 24th fret, so that's not necessary. However, I will make sure that I have my my 22nd fret open D, uh, my 22nd fret D. It's going to be right on the 440 hertz of tuning. So we got E, F, G, A, B, C, D. My 24th fret's the last one, the 24th's E. So I was just able to go octave to octave to octave. <laughs> Another way to check the intuning, the intonation, if you don't have a tuner, if I can make it ring right on top of the fret, and it's the same exact tone as when I put my finger on the 12th fret, and I cannot hear the difference. It's a great way to check. But the tuners don't lie. And of course, if they're a little sharp, you got to make the string length longer. So you loosen the string to take tension off the screw. And you turn the screw to bring the barrel towards the bridge to give more string length. That'll flatten the tone. And if it's flat and you need to sharp the tone, you have to make the string length shorter. Same thing applies. Loosen the string to take pressure off the screw and wind out the screw and let the spring move the saddle just enough until uh, it's flat enough. I mean, yeah, until it's sharp enough to be perfect tune all the way along all your frets. So the string length, once you get past the open frets, just needs to be adjusted so that you have the intonation at the 12th and the 22nd fret on this guitar. I'll be checking that out later, but there it is. There's the guitar. 
there's everything I know about it. Oh, one last thing. Blue jeans were very popular in the 70s. And uh, this guitar was mostly played standing up. Because there's no blue jean rash where it would be on someone's knee while they were sitting. But right here, right at the pocket, so whoever played this guitar kept it right down to their hip when they played it, which is fairly comfortable for a heavy guitar. But there it is, the, the blue jean rash from the denim blue jeans of the 70s. That was kind of nice. And, uh, not a bad guitar at all. We do have the nitro uh, cellulite finish cracks, but nothing too bad. It's never been dropped. Nothing, nothing major. Hey, everything's looking really well on this guitar. Very well built. Tress rod. Looks like it was machined nicely and and uh, they actually capped it off with a nice little epoxy molded insert. Kind of a nice touch. Let's see, you can see the nut right here and the truss rod adjustment screw and this little cutout access they made a nice little epoxy mold thought that was a nice touch they did and uh, music man tuners and there it is the music man I don't know if you can see in the light Just the small lines from where the finish aged and has its little hairline cracks. That's it. Can't see them in the camera, but I can see them. Okay, the guitar.